bed in the morning they're drinking coffee and probably stuff that's a bit stronger than that hey everybody welcome to episode something of stace and barry in the morning I was going to write down which episode it was and then I went back through and realised that we had two episode tens and so I thought it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's counting? I'm who's, not. We certainly weren't. No, clearly not. Well, or maybe see, episode 10 was so good that we just decided that we loved the number 10. We just did it twice. It was so yeah. good. We did it twice. Or it was so shit the first time around we were like, let's do that again. <laughs> You decide, listeners. Yeah, well, anyway, I'm the Stace half of that there Stace and Barry title. And those that, beautiful tones you can hear down the other end of the internet are the, is the Barry half. That would make me the Barry half. I'm not saying whether that makes me the back half. Like for, yeah. for a, a pantomime horse or something. Top half and the bottom half. Do you know what? I think we just need to swiftly move off this I think, topic. Yeah, I think we should. I think we should. <laughs> How are you doing on this glorious Saturday morning, you beautiful bastard? I... <laughs> Last time I checked, I was still a beautiful bastard and I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you doing? Good, good. I am. So I've lost track of my life. <laughs> I know. I've lost track of day. I don't Days, understand time. time. Is it even Saturday? What is Saturday anyway? It's a concept. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> the weekend is a concept now. Just, yeah. I keep doing that thing though, and I'm getting very annoyed with myself where I forget what day it is, but I actually I'm further from the weekend than I think I am. So it's like the disappointing way of doing it. Like, you know, when sometimes it's Wednesday and you think, oh, no, it's Tuesday. And then you get excited when you realise it's Wednesday. I keep doing the opposite. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> yeah. I keep thinking, oh, like, oh, no, like, you know. And then it turns out, actually, like, it was like on Wednesday. On Wednesday, I was like, oh, Thursday. We're so close to the weekend. And Rich was like, you know, it's Wednesday. Right? I was like, shit, shit. Uh, so, yeah, I've lost track of, like, everything. But I have watched a lot of stuff and read some things listened to some things so you know swings and roundabouts in it yeah i haven't watched as much stuff as i we were really struggling for something to watch um, yesterday because a lot of things we didn't want to start watching we were like oh no it's too bleak it's too bleak let's watch a trailer for it so it's like oh no that's too bleak <laughs> i'll tell you what the fact that people are like really going to town on um outbreak and contagion right now is about? baffling to me so Every baffling time- Every time I go into even Netflix or Amazon, when, like you say, when it brings up like, what people are watching, and it's like Contagion is, is like right up there, followed by, like you say, Outbreak, which is, don't get me wrong, in, in the right climate, Out, Outbreak is a great film. I really enjoy Outbreak. Perhaps now isn't the right climate to watch. <laughs> well, I've never seen Outbreak, but I sort of refuse to watch it now because I'm like, I'm already anxious enough. Yeah, I don't that's... need to be adding in like Hollywood levels of drama. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's no. not going to help. <laughs> no, you don't need Dustin Hoffman like in a hazmat suit in your living room. You don't. <laughs> I mean, actually, that sounds pretty cool. But <laughs> when this is, when when this is all over, whenever that is, uh, yeah, give give a watch. Um, this is a cracking film. Yeah. But yeah, it just amazes me the amount of plague-related paraphernalia <laughs> people are watching at the moment. It's like just open a window. It's, it's yeah. right there. Just put on the news. Put on the Jeez, news. Yeah. <laughs> but another news before we move on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have to quickly slide this in on the, under the doormat. Uh, I have watched the first episode. Well, I've now watched one and a half episodes of Bob's Burgers. Yay! <laughs> and how do you feel? I might have celebrated too early. <laughs> <laughs> well, as in, like, I liked the first one and watched half the second thought, now I'm out. No, I'm out. Um, <laughs> no, that isn't, no that, that isn't the case. Yay! Um, I watched the first episode and I was enjoying it. And what I realised is the the guy who plays Bob, who obviously is the guy who does the same voice for Archer, mm-hmm. he could literally be in any cartoon and I would watch it and I would find it funny. He's got such a wonderful voice and it doesn't matter to me that he's got zero, you know, range in terms of like variety. No, no, <laughs> like... No, doesn't need to. Doesn't <laughs> Have you read his book? no okay he's got a book out called failure is an option 
and it's about how um, it's fine if you're shit at certain things or if you fail at things for like the first however many times you try them. Like it's it's actually a really reassuring book about how even if you're famous, you probably didn't get there just by, you know, constantly winning at life. Um, <laughs> but there's a brilliant chapter in there when it's like people sometimes it's literally like two lines. It's like people sometimes ask me how I came up with the voices for Bob and, and Archer. It's just my voice. I just do my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, and I would still listen to it. It's yeah, great. just so happens that his voice is glorious. But it it's is. Just, it's just a, it isn't that he's got a specific type of voice. Um, it's the it's just the delivery of it's, the lines, yeah. and I can't even say what's good about it. It isn't that they're deadpan or anything like that. It's it's just the delivery of the lines. And like I said, I watched that first episode, and I was enjoying it. It wasn't blowing me away, but I was enjoying it, and I'd already sort of said, you know what, I would stick with it because I know every show takes a little while to get going. Yeah. Um, but when they had the sequence where it was the health inspector guy and he couldn't get out of the parking space, and they were having this massive <laughs> argument, and in the end he just went, look, get out, I'll, I'll, I'll park it. Oh no, no, he, he then started directing him, and he was like, no, no, come back a bit, back a bit, no, 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 forward a bit, forward a bit, no, no. Do you know what? I'll, I'll park it. I'll. I'll I'll get out. I'll get you get out. I'll do it. Um, which I recognize, as I just said, it makes it sound like an absolutely shit scene. <laughs> However, I was in tears of laughter watching it, and I can't even tell you what. Honestly, I can't even tell you why. It's just so good. <laughs> it, it is just because like all of the characters are fantastic. Yeah. Um, and I love like. I mean, this isn't a spoiler because it's like such a throwaway line, but like there's there's so many just lines in there that catch you off guard because you're not expecting a joke there. Um, And the one that really sticks in my head, and I can't remember which series it's from, is an episode where um, Teddy walks in and he sits down in his usual little stool and... uh, (laughs) and linda says oh hi teddy like how are you doing today you look happy oh no wait you look depressed (laughs) i don't know why (laughs) but the way that she delivers it and the look on his face i was creasing for like we had to stop the episode so that i could stop laughing (laughs) so that i could actually pay attention to the rest of it i love that show so much yeah so that's what i want to say i'm now fully invested in bob's burgers and i will be reporting back on semi-regular um episodes huzzah um, yeah <laughs> excellent right should we do an actual segment because we've let's been talking for actual, quite a while <laughs> let's do an actual an actual seg segway pick of the fortnight pick you go first oh thanks mate um so as i was saying earlier me and rich have been watching like all of the world's films not literally all of the world's films but we came across uh, a subscription service thing called mubi and what that is it is movies from across the world so like ones that aren't necessarily available on like english netflix for example um But the the catch with them is is that they're only available for like 30 days and then they fuck off and new movies come in. Right. Um, So Rich was like, hey, we should watch more like world cinema anyway. Um, So we got this movie and we've been watching a few different things. Um, And one of the things we watched is (laughs) it's probably a bit of a waste of this subscription service because it's like really famous trilogy. (laughs) Um, But we watched the, the Vengeance trilogy, which is... Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, Old Boy, and Lady Vengeance. Have you ever seen any of these movies? I have seen Old Boy, okay. and I will, I, will, I will not watch Old Boy again. <laughs> yeah, I can fully, fully understand why. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, for those that don't know, the, the trilogy, it's, uh, it's the Vengeance trilogy by Park Chan-wook, and... Um, korean movies from the early 2000s the first one i don't want to say too much about them because i think if you go and watch them i don't want to like ruin surprises and stuff um but basically they are all revenge stories so the first one is about a man getting um revenge uh on the people that killed his daughter um the second one old boy is about a guy who gets uh revenge for reasons that would be a massive spoiler because you don't find them out till the end yeah 
And uh, the third one, Lady Vengeance, is about a woman who gets revenge on a guy who got her wrongfully convicted of kidnapping and got her put in prison. <laughs> they are they are simultaneously some of the most uncomfortable films I've ever seen, but they're also fucking brilliant. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, you've seen Old Boy, so I think you probably get what I'm going for with this in the sense that yeah i never want to watch it again yeah um but it is a fantastically made movie god it's just it's just such a well done awful film <laughs> and i think with um like old boy i can't speak to the other two and now that i know it's they're actually a trilogy the, the, the odds of me watching the other two are, are dramatically dropping as i talk <laughs> um, <laughs> that isn't and you're right and that's not knocking them that's not it's not to say like the that old boy isn't an amazing film it is an amazing film but it's an amazing film that you only want to watch the once so you go you know what yep i'm amazed and disgusted at the same time i'm out <laughs> like audition yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's uh i mean the other two i would say are less gross then okay. I don't want to give people a bad impression of old boy as though it's like the grossest thing in the world, but no. something happens in that film that is wildly uncomfortable. So like all three films feature, like I say, revenge plots. So there's a lot of like uncomfortable sequences of like, you know, like body mutilation and torture and stuff like that. But it's not like the focus of the film, which I actually quite liked mm. because I think if they'd have lent into that too much, it would have become a bit too sort of like, saw spectacle torture porny kind of do you yeah. know what i mean whereas these these films i think they're really deft with the way that they deal with those themes but the thing that i really liked about it as well is that the even though they're just three films about people getting revenge um they're such wildly different stories and they're so well told and structured and the the actors in it are all amazing like, I was just really taken by how amazing these films are. But it is definitely one of those where you watch it and you go, well, this is absolutely a five star movie, but I never want to see it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, feel, I, mean... I feel a bit less like that with, uh, with the first and the third one. Um, right. I could potentially watch those again at some point. Um, but, yeah, they are just like, God, they're just like really fucking good movies. Yeah. But yeah. but I think that sums it up though. If you had that on the poster with for old boy that said, you know, um, Stacey and Bray gives five stars, amazing, would never watch again <laughs> <laughs> in a much smaller font. <laughs> Joey. Yeah, yeah, five stars, absolutely loved it. Never gonna put my eyes on that though, <laughs> ever again. <laughs> just, just wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I would highly recommend. If you haven't seen them, watching them, you know, just the once. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Watch them just, just the once. Yeah, yeah, give them a whirl. And I would say to you, if, like, I think if you've sat through Old Boy and you've, I don't want to say enjoyed it because it's difficult to say you enjoy that movie, but if you've appreciated it as a piece of filmmaking art, which it sort of is, I think you would appreciate the other two because, yeah, the thing that happens in Old Boy, there's nothing really similar to that in the other two. Right. Um, it's more sort of standard like I say like the third one is about a woman who um, gets revenge on somebody she gets accidentally embroiled in a sort of kidnapping situation and she's the one who gets put away for it when actually it wasn't her so it's her taking revenge on the actual kidnappers yeah. um, so it's a much more sort of standard revengey plot I'm, I'm really dancing around this because I think I don't want to spoil old boy for people but then similarly I knew what happened at the end of Old Boy, and it didn't help. <laughs> I, I had no, I had no idea what happened at the end of Old Boy, and I don't think it would have helped. Yeah, had I, no, no, it didn't, because um, I was a bit worried actually that knowing what you know the end thing is would ruin it for me, because I'd be like the whole way through just waiting for that thing to happen. But actually, still, when it happens, it's like, oh. God, <laughs> why? Yeah, <laughs> my eyes. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, really good, really good movies, and uh, hopefully we'll be watching more exciting world cinema stuff uh, on Mubi for the next however long we're trapped in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Well, I can say uh, up front, this this 
my response to um Pick of the Four Night was not planned. We we have not discussed this in any shape or form. We never discussed this in any shape or form. <laughs> Other than other than a brief kind of what topics we have it this week, um, <laughs> but my choice you might also put under the heading of world cinema. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Except or, or world TV might be a better term. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So um, one of the things, and I think I've said this before on on here about that I love about Netflix is that it has opened my eyes to. Um, well genre mm-hmm. you know and how they how they do genre shows and and just some really inventive ways that they do stuff and the show i want to pick that i've i've they've just put out the four i think they call it part four just sort of came out a couple of weeks ago is a show called money heist have you heard of this <laughs> no but i kind of love it just from the title all right <laughs> money heist it just does what it says on the team <laughs> So, oh, I'm <coughs> so um, basically, this is on. I said it was on Netflix. It came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. So, uh, Money Heist or La Casa de Papel. I'm sure I've said that wrong. It's a Spanish heist crime drama. Um, the series traces two long prepared heists led by the professor. We'll come back to him. Um, one is the Royal Mint of Spain, and the other one is the Bank of Spain. So the first two parts is what they call them, which is effectively one season, deals with one heist. So it deals with them robbing the, the Royal Mint of Spain. Oh. Um, and I won't say, when I say robbing, that, that's just putting it really, really loosely. Because this, so, the, so basically this guy, the professor, puts together this team of people to uh, rob robbed the robbed raw mint and to say this guy has prepared for every eventuality is a complete understatement so do you ever watch lost uh no i never got into lost so but you wear the premise of lost i.e that it used to have these sort of flashbacks to how people got on the plane and, and stuff like that yeah 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 so it's a similar premise in that when the heist kicks off um, so we start with the heist kicking off, but then what it does is it does flashbacks to show the preparations for the heist. Mm. And it is just, it's such a brilliant show because there'll be parts of the show where you just think, well, they're, they're screwed. How, how, how are they going to get out of that? And it will flash back to the professor and the team. And literally he is like a professor. He's got like a chalkboard and everything. And they're sitting like in little, like a classroom almost. And he's kind of going, right, well, we all know that the police will do blah, blah, blah. If this happens, you need to execute plan, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. He is one of the best criminal geniuses I've I've ever seen in a show. And I love me some criminal genius. <laughs> I was um, just going to say, it sounds like this film was like, uh, this show was like somebody just reached into your brain and went, hmm. Yeah. What to make a show about? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also as well, um, you actually root for them because as it goes on, they're kind of like anti-heroes to a certain extent. And you realize mm. the professor's got his own reasons for doing it and stuff. Like that. And it's um, the best way to describe the first two series is effectively die hard, but from the villain's point of view. <laughs> so Amazing. And then the, the, the part four that I've just watched I'm trying really careful because I don't want to sort of spoil it Um, because they do another heist. And I think this is a bit longer because even though we've had parts three and four, the heist is still going. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get a a fifth season. Is that... That's a long ass heist. I know. I know. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's so worth it. Um, (laughs) But um, the part four, I would sum up by basically using the same diehard analogy and it's from the point of view of like, Hans Gruber and the and the other sort of villains, um, and we're rooting for them. And you've got a Bruce Willis character in there, and he's a complete arsehole. <laughs> so in many ways, Bruce Willis is the villain. Brilliant. And they even make reference to it, which is what I like. Is they just own it and make a reference to it. 
and one of the one of the um, people calls the guy John McClane. You know, it's just <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love when people just go, "No, we know what we're doing." <laughs> Do <you know> what <laughs> mean? Wink. Yeah, um, yeah, it is. It's phenomenal. Love it. Nice. That's Money Heist. That's on uh, Netflix. Excellent. Boom. Hi. Hi. Let's do a, a trumpet. <laughs> Musical musings. Yeah. I reckon we'll probably do musings. Okay. Bob's Burgers kind of gets his own little segment, really, doesn't he? Bless him. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Uh, we did waffle a bit. Barry, can I ask you a question? Yes. Have you seen the movie The Fountain? No. This is the one with Hugh Jackman, isn't it? Tis. It is yeah. indeed. So this is another one of our uh, Richie's trying to watch a movie he's never seen before a day and he is very ahead of his own curve. <laughs> <All right>. um, <laughs> we put this on because Rich, it's by, um, it's directed by Darren Aronofsky. I think yeah. that's how you pronounce his name. Oh, sorry. Um, and Rich had heard that it was one of those films that like people are really torn over. They either like hate it, don't understand it, don't get it, it's weird. Or people love it. <laughs> Um, so Rich put it on, fully briefed me that I might not understand it because I get easily confused. <laughs> and uh, and actually, I found it really easy to understand. And it's a really quite phenomenal film. Okay. Um, but the thing that really struck me about it is the score, which is by Clint Mansell, who, Ooh. yeah, he also did the score for Moon, which is one of my favourite films ever. Yeah. Um, but this soundtrack is... Um, I don't want to spoil too much about the movie, but the basic premise of it is about uh, Hugh Jackman um, trying to find a cure for his wife's, Rachel Weiss, um, trying to find a cure for her brain tumour because he's mm. like a scientist doctor type um, and she's like a sort of creative writer type person. And it's about how he needs to basically sort of more embrace uh, death and um learn to accept it in a way that's that's sort of at, at war with his scientific side so like he's very much in a in a place of this is a thing that's like a mutation or whatever this can be cured we can fix it i can cure death if i try hard enough so i'll fucking do it and it's about it's about him having to learn um to maybe not look at life quite so rigidly and about accepting things that you can't change and blah 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 it's like a really beautiful film um and the score is just haunting and there's a particular track that i chose that has a slightly uh slightly grim title um it's called death is the road to all okay and it yeah it comes towards the end of the film when a particular sort of bit happens so it's like it's like this beautiful it's mostly piano and strings but there is like it just builds up so it gets a bit more percussive and a bit more uh, there's a bit of electric guitar towards the end but it's just like this beautiful haunting melody that just like slowly like builds up and builds up and then it pulls back a little bit and then it builds up and then it builds up and then it pulls back a little bit and then it's like bam just hits you in the face with this big emotional like woof uh, it's like this like eight and a half minute long beautiful haunting opus uh and it's just like i was watching the scenes that went with that music and i was actually just paying far more attention to the music because i was like <laughs> this is i'm gonna cry this is stunning <laughs> like, like i legit listened to the same track afterwards and had a little cry because i was like this is so beautiful uh, <laughs> um so yeah don't listen to it if you're in like a dodgy mood because you might just like openly weep um okay. <laughs> but like yeah oh god it's just so beautiful and it so perfectly works with what that particular bit of the film well i mean the same that the score fits with the movie like a fucking glove anyway but this particular like sort of sequence um as things build up in hugh jackman's life uh it's yeah it's just gorgeous cool okay yeah well i've I've never listened to the soundtrack for it and I've never seen the film. So listening to you talk is now maybe want to check the film out and check out the soundtrack. Oh, good. I thought the film was um, fantastic. I don't I actually don't understand how people were confused by it, because, like I say, I'm very easily confused. Um, yeah. But I think it's very clear 
what it's doing. I'd be interested to hear what you think, actually. So if you do watch it, let me know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like halfway through, I actually said to Rich, like, is this what's happening? Because I'm I'm understanding it if that's the case and I don't get it. And he was like, no, you are. You are right. That is what's happening. I was like, oh, OK, cool. Because I thought maybe I was misreading things because I was supposed to find it confusing. I don't know. Um, but it's just a really, yeah, it's a really beautiful film and a really beautiful score. Cool. Right, my choice um, is a way back in time choice. It's a it's a choice of the heart. I think I might have picked this already, but maybe not here. Maybe on Don't from Nuge or on Geek Syndicate Clang. Mm. And uh, this is from a film <laughs> which I saw as a kid. Um, in fact, Dave and I went to see this. And to tell you a little story, um, we managed to. Con- there was eight of us. We went to the cinema, and. Uh, they all wanted to see Jaws 3D and Dave and I worked on them all the way to the cinema and managed to convince them to go and see this other movie uh, to which they have never forgiven us. Even though we both really enjoyed the movie, all of them came out of there going, I can't believe you made us go and see that instead of Jaws 3D. <laughs> um, and the, the film we made them go and see was Crow. Okay. Now, have you seen Crow? I haven't. Okay. I'll, I'll forgive you. <laughs> um, now, uh, yeah, Crawl's one of those films that it kind of is quite a divisive film because a lot of people just think it's absolutely shit. Um, <laughs> whereas I Can't love wait. that. I love a. I love that film because I do think the eighties was a very different time film wise. Anyway, mm. and I think a lot of the people that are saying it's shit or whatever are kind of watching it in the 2000s and stuff like that and special effects are very different and and all and all of the rest of it but what i just loved about it is is it's just a it's a swashbuckling adventure <laughs> b even though there's obviously there's clearly american money in it because the pretty much everyone in there is a brit apart from the main character in it plays a, a prince prince colwyn he's american but pretty much everyone else is a brit but yeah, I just, I don't know, I just I just love it. And one of the reasons that I love this film is it's got one of the most phenomenal underrated um, soundtracks. And the the soundtrack is done by um, James Horner. Ooh. Yeah. And I would say, mm, I mean, every, every soundtrack James Horner's done is fabulous anyway, but I would say this is one of his best. This one's up there. Because if you ever wanted to like condense the phrase swashbuckler into a piece of music, <laughs> um, it would be a, this piece of music, but also this soundtrack. It's just a swashbuckling soundtrack and it elevates the movie. Mm. You know, I enjoy the movie anyway, but you, you put this soundtrack on it and it just takes it to like another level for me. But this, <laughs> so this, the, the piece of music I've chosen is called ride of the fire Mares. Okay. So in the movie, yes, the spoiler, the movie came out decades ago, deal with it. Um, mm-hmm. They basically have to get to this, this castle moves every um, every sunset, the castle moves. So, um, and no one knows, it always goes somewhere different, no one knows. So they, they, they're able to find the location of where they've got to go to this castle. But the castle is like a thousand leagues away and they sort of go, we'll never be able to make it in time. And then someone goes, oh, firemares can travel a thousand leagues in a day. And firemares are basically horses that ride so fast that fire comes out of their hooves and they can... <laughs> and, and, that sounds awesome. <laughs> right? And they can fly. Okay. <laughs> All of which you see in this sequence of them riding to get to this um, to get to this castle, well, castle citadel, whatever you call it. Um, I think that's it. I think every time the sun comes up, when the sun hits the um, when the first rays of the sun hits the tower, it then moves. So they've oh. only got until the sun comes up. I think that's what it is. I'm trying to remember, it's been a long time since I've actually sat and watched it. So this piece of music basically covers their journey on these horses to get to this place, and it is phenomenal people can say what they want to me about the film but there is no way you can tell you can t- listen to that piece of music and tell me that is a bad piece of music it is phenomenal and it's one of my favorite pieces of music of all time oh wow okay 
Oh, I'm going to have to give that a listen then, because when you were describing what it was, it put me in the mind of a particular piece of music from an anime that I love. And now oh. I kind of what I want to do is I kind of want to listen to this track and see if it's anything like what I'm thinking. <laughs> right. <laughs> and what I'll do is if I'm right, I'll send you a link to the song that I was thinking of and you can be like aha another excellent swashbuckly piece of music and if I'm wrong I'll just never mention it again <laughs> <laughs> that's a deal ah uh, good deal yeah so Ride of Fire Me is, is is on um YouTube I did check so if you do a search for it you'll be able to find the, the track uh, excellent also like, if, you um... want, if you want a cheesy like adventure epic adventure you watch Crow some time as well I like how we've been really balanced this episode in that I'm like, hey, look at this trilogy about like violence and revenge. And you're like, money heist. (laughs) (laughs) And then I was like, oh, watch this beautiful film about like, you know, learning to accept death and like the inevitability of the end of life. And you're like, what about swashbuckles? (laughs) (laughs) Flaming (laughs) horses. No, I love it. It's it's why we work so well together. It is. It is. (laughs) I now want to sit in a meeting when next time I have some sort of meeting and then just randomly as someone will finish their meeting, has anyone got anything else? I'll just suddenly go, firemates can travel a thousand leagues a day. <laughs> Money heist! <laughs> you son of a bitch, I mean. Yeah. Oh, dearie me. Well, that was Stace and Barry in the morning episode something. Yay! Oh, just did Kermit arms. Uh, <laughs> um, drop us a tweet at Stacey's Parlour at Geek Syndicate. Send us an email, Barry at gmail.com. Or don't do either of those things. I don't care. Do what makes you happy. <laughs> you know, go watch a film, go watch the yeah. Vengeance trilogy, and then do some swashbuckling. It'd be good. Firemares can travel a thousand leagues in a day. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Money heist. Money heist. Ha, ha, ha.